Today I am going to show you the surgical removal of impacted mandibular right third molar. Clinically the distal cusp of the tooth is covered by the pericoronal flap. Radiographically we can see that the bone distal to the third molar is above the CJ level. So some bone removal is required to extract this tooth. I am applying pressure using a small gauze soaked with topical anesthetic. The site where I am applying pressure is the site of needle insertion for inferior L1 nerve block. You can watch my other nerve block videos on the channel for further explanation. I insert the needle for inferior L1 nerve block, aspirate in two planes and deposit the LA solution. For lingual nerve block, I withdraw half the needle, aspirate in two planes and deposit the LA solution. I do the same thing for the buccal nerve block. You can watch my video on buccal nerve block for further explanation. I then infiltrate the area where I'm going to place the incision with adrenaline. I ask the patient whether she feels numbness in the lower lip region and tongue region. She does feel the numbness. As always, I first poke a blunt instrument on the contralateral side to show the patient what actual pain feels like. Then I check for the signs and symptoms of local anesthesia on the same side. Here I'm checking for the effect of buccal nerve block. Now I'm checking for the effect of inferior albumin nerve block. On the lingual soft tissue, I check for the effect of lingual nerve block. For further details, watch my previous videos on extraction of mandibular left third molar. I now place a watch incision to expose the bone surrounding the third molar. Start the reflection of the flap from the anterior releasing incision. I then reflect the flap making sure that I don't tear the periosteum. I then create ditches in the bone surrounding the tooth using a HP6 round bar. For precise bone cutting, make sure that you stabilize your hand by taking support from the surrounding heart tissue. Then using a straight 702 bar, I connect those ditches to create a bone gutter around the tooth. This is how the bone gutter looks like. I then place a Copeland elevator in the bone gutter and elevate the tooth out of its socket. I use a mandibular third molar forcep to pick the tooth out of the socket. You can see that the mesial root of the tooth is fractured. The root fractured after elevation, so it is just a matter of picking the root out of the socket with a curette. There is a small dental follicle distal to the extraction socket, so I remove it with a number 15 blade. I then round off the sharp margins with the round bar. I irrigate the socket with normal saline. The irrigation is done under pressure to force out any debris that may have fallen inside the socket during the procedure. 
I then sutured the flap with two simple interrupted sutures. the flap looks like after suturing I place the pressure packing on the extraction side making sure that it does not interfere with the occlusion That's my incredible patient who's also my student 4 days after the surgery